We're back in Vienna, 1938. Life was absolutely blissful. I was 10 and a half. I was involved in family. I was involved in acting. I was involved in drama. I was involved in ice skating and skiing. My parents were happily married with a large extended family of about 37. Until on March 11, 38, everything changed. That was the day when Hitler's soldiers marched into Vienna, but they went down the Ringstrasse to a howling of women with swastikas waving. Within three months, the Germans were so organized that they had established a refugee emigration organization and began to say Jews had to leave. I had not been made conscious of being Jewish or being different in any way. It just seemed like something was going to pass. But it was when my parents began to search for places to go that it began to be real for me. I was going to participate in competition for ice skating, and a supervisor called me in one day and said, my dear lady, I'm so sorry, but these new Jewish laws are in place, and..." You wouldn't be able to compete, so you can't do this anymore. With that, the exclusion, that sense of being nobody, penetrated into me, and I was ready to get out of Vienna. It was just on an ordinary day that people were standing in line, and somebody said, get in line, they're giving out visas at the Chinese consulate. It so happened that my father had our passports, and he went in, he came out half an hour later, and he came home and said to my mother, well, if everything else fails, we can always go to China, he waving his passports. We had the visa, and that's how we were able to leave Vienna. With our last money, we went on boats run by an Italian company, the Lloyd Triestino, and it was a luxury liner. So we had tea dances and champagne, the boat landed. There was nobody there to receive us. There was no customs. There was no, no police. So it was chaos. So we were able to go to China because of chaos. And we went from this luxury liner into a place with 50 people, double bunk beds, and my mother was in absolute depression. 14 of the people in our family who didn't go were all killed. My mother had uh, cholera, my father died of cancer, I had liver flukes every summer. It wasn't exactly a holiday. We were in Shanghai seven and a half years. I think the image of America grew. It was uh, where you wanted to be. You waited for that, you lived for that. 47, we were able to come here. I managed to work at Metro Goldwyn May as a legal secretary met my husband and found my life. That wasn't hard. So let me just tell you the surprising part. In 2003, I got a phone call from a friend who said, did I still have my German passports? And she, I said, why? And she said, well, somebody is looking for people who went to Shanghai with their visas. And I looked it up and there it was. And I cannot tell you the feelings of seeing my 37-year-old mother and 41-year-old father and what that brought back. It turned out that the one who wanted the passport was the Chinese consul's daughter. And she said on the phone, I think you're one of the ones my father gave a visa to. From 1938 to 2003, I had no idea that this was a conscious act of kindness. Instead of thinking that somebody bureaucratically was stamping visas and that was no big deal, that there was a man who gave us visas because it helped us to go leave Vienna. It's this kind of resistance that's needed. Standing up against some status quo without making a thing of it and risking something he didn't want to be a hero. He didn't want to be lauded. It was just something you help people that are in trouble. 
I think it is a bright light in the darkness of the Holocaust that there were one or two righteous diplomats who did that for us. Holocaust Museum Houston is proud to present Dr. Feng Shan Ho with the 2015 Lyndon Baines Johnson Moral Courage Award.